I recently found myself confined at home with loathsome sickness. While going through my little library, I found this book, New Architecture for the Underground, by David J. Taylor. This is a bit of a curiosity. It's a book containing illustrations of planned underground stations. It was published in 2001, and of course, things have changed a bit. There's talk of Crossrail, but this was also when the Overground was being referred to as the East London Line Extension. Some of the stations did get built, like the new ones at Elephant and Castle and Hounslow East, but some didn't. Having blocked tubes very much on my mind at the time, the one that stood out to me was Camden Town. Camden Town is a problematic station that's very often blocked up. It was opened in 1907 as part of the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway, a.k.a. the Hampstead Tube. Back then, Camden was very much a suburb. It was part residential, part industrial, a junction of railways and canals. It was quite working class and not very fashionable. In the second half of the 20th century, things started to change. Industries moved out, leaving large complexes of premises vacant. In 1974, derelict railway buildings by the canal were turned into Camden Lock Market. Over the following decades, Camden became cool. Businesses moved in, more markets opened. The area acquired a reputation for music, fashion and art. If you'll forgive me for getting nostalgic, it was my favourite place for vintage fashion on a budget. Before a night out in a variety of pubs and clubs, before decamping to a friend's flat and waking up the next day vowing never to drink again. Ah, memories. Where was I? Oh yes, despite the fact that many of the grubbier venues have been redeveloped, don't even get me started, Camden Town is a very popular destination. Too popular. A station designed for residential commuters is having to deal with volumes of traffic more appropriate to the heart of the West End every weekend. The entrance to the station often has to be closed. If you know the area, you could alternatively use Mornington Crescent, Chalk Farm, Camden Road or Kentish Town West stations. But those aren't quite so central. There's another problem which lies below ground. When Camden Town Station was built, it was a junction. Here, the Hampstead Tube branched into two. One line went up to Hampstead and Golders Green, and the other to Highgate, now Archway. In 1913, the owners of the Hampstead Tube, Underground Electric Railways of London, bought another tube line, the City and South London Railway. They planned to combine the two lines together into a single one, connecting in the south at Kennington and in the north at Camden Town. You would now know this as the Northern Line. In 1924, the connection at Camden Town was completed, the same year as an extension to Edgware. The lifts were replaced with escalators to increase capacity in 1929. Trains could now run in four directions, north to Edgware or Highgate, and south via the City or Charing Cross. Services could run as frequently as every one and a half minutes. In 1941, the line was extended again, this time up to Mill Hill East and High Barnet. At the same time, Camden Town Station underwent an enforced rebuild, courtesy of this bit of the station getting blown up. And there were even more ideas for the future, to extend the Northern Line to Bushy Heath and Watford, and to run a second express line under the existing one. Not that any of those got implemented, but I just think it's interesting. The long and short of all this was that an incredible number of trains had to go through Camden Town, being switched between different routes. It's infamously a nightmare for signalling. For passengers, the platform configuration can be rather bewildering, if you can get in at all. By the late 90s, it was clear that something would have to be done. Well, realistically, by the late 90s, it was clear that something should have been done about a decade previously, but hindsight is 2020. And that's where this book comes in. You see, the idea was put forward to simply knock Camden Town down and start again with a brand new station. There wasn't much that could be done with the layout of the platforms themselves, not without rebuilding the entire line. But as an alternative, the plan was to take over the entire block bounded by Camden Road, Kentish Town, High Street and Buck Street, knock it all down, and build a new station. And that's what you see in this book. The ideas proposed are certainly interesting, though I have no doubt that they'll divide opinion among viewers. They're quite reminiscent of the Jubilee Line extension stations, which, to be honest, is not surprising. 
Those were completed in 1999, just two years before this book was published. The idea was to build a sort of focal point, a destination, to use the kind of language that developers are so fond of throwing around. Naturally, the top priority would be improving the flow of people with increased numbers of passages between the platforms and a much larger ticket hall. A third escalator would have been added. Above ground, though, is where things get really interesting. There are a number of different proposals. Now, apologies in advance for the quality of the images here. This was the favourite, which I have to say I quite like. It reminds me, in a curious way, of the much older Chalk Farm station, which also has this corner site frontage. It was designed by the architectural firm of Jestico Plus Wiles. Is that meant to be Jestico and Wiles? They use a plus sign. There was also this one, which includes this rather exciting spire. Again, I think this is a rather interesting design. I feel that it harks back to earlier underground designs, but also does its own thing. The semicircular sweep there reminds me of Uxbridge. This design was by Wilkinson Eyre. The same group proposed this sort of canopy frontage. I'm not exactly clear how this would have fitted in with the other streets, which way it was facing, was it high enough to avoid getting knocked off by buses and other such questions. It's certainly eye-catching, but I don't think it would have worked. This one also intrigues me, with what the book describes as a pod above the rest of the station. I actually quite like this in itself, as a concept. If you were building something like this in, say, Canary Wharf, I think it would be very impressive. My main concern about it is the same one that I have with most of these designs, which I shall elaborate upon shortly. There's also this one from the front cover of the book, which is meh. It's alright. It looks more like a shopping mall than a station to me. Now, I sometimes get people telling me off for using the term mall because it's an Americanism, but to me there's a big difference between, say, a place like Watford Market and a purpose-built shopping citadel like our Westfield friends. Shopping centre just doesn't quite fit for me. Anyway, that's why I think this looks like a shopping mall. Point is, I don't think it's all that interesting. Something you may have noticed about all these designs is that even though they are designed to create a much more spacious station, they are nevertheless much larger than they need to be. That's nothing new for the underground. Charles Holden very deliberately designed his stations with a lot of headroom. But that's not why these designs are so large. Building in London is expensive, so each of these stations were designed to be a mixed-use development with shopping, leisure, residential and or office space included. This isn't anything new either. Leslie Green's classic underground stations were built with a flat roof so that offices could be built on top of them, and Charles Holden's stations often included space for retail premises. My problem with all this is not dissimilar to the problem I alluded to earlier with the pod design. So let me explain. What made Camden cool was the fact that it had an indie vibe. It felt kind of grungy and low-budget, kind of small-scale. The current station fits into that vibe really well. These station designs feel a bit too modern, a bit too fancy, and above all, a bit too large. They overwhelm their surroundings. Put them in a new development, a large development, they'd be fine. But put them in Camden Town, they dominate. But what I think doesn't really matter, because, of course, none of this happened. The proposal received a great deal of local backlash, not least because it would have involved the demolition of the popular electric ballroom venue. In 2004, planning permission was turned down. In 2007, the government declared that the building was dilapidated, and could therefore be redeveloped, which seems mighty convenient to me. TFL scaled their plans down. The first thing was to buy this here. This was a deep-level air raid shelter built by London Transport during the Second World War. Remember I mentioned that express tube line? The idea was that this would be turned into a station on that after the war. That didn't get built, but it did leave a nice big underground space that TfL could move their junk into. Then the idea was to build a second entrance to the station here on Buck Street. This resulted in Camden Town Market having to be closed. It's been replaced with the development you see here. But then that version of the rebuild didn't happen either. 
In 2018, the scheme was put on hold due to budget cuts, resulting from delays to Crossrail. Since then, TfL has suffered the blow from the pandemic, so who knows when or if it'll go ahead. Meanwhile, Camden itself is in the process of going up market. Many of the old market sites have been bought up and either redeveloped or proposed for redevelopment as part of the ongoing genericization of London. I mean, I know it's natural to think that things were better when I were a lad. But Camden Market never used to have a sports direct. There's also something called Tomb Raider The Live Experience, which seems like a lot of fuss for something you can do at your local cemetery with a pick and shovel. I'm depressing myself now, but I can't help but think that maybe, by the time the money is available to rebuild the station, none of these designs will seem so out of place after all. Hello, I do hope you enjoyed this indie tale from the tube, even if I did end on a bit of a downer. If you did enjoy it, please do click the like button to inform YouTube, and consider subscribing for more from the underground and elsewhere. Thanks as always to my donors on Kofi and Patreon, you are the electricity to my ballroom. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.